بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نعمد و نصلي على رسول الكريم أما بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Respected viewers, today I'll talk about our relationship with our parents. Uh, actually, we live in this age. This is an age of science and the materialism. And uh, you know that we have uh, lots of uh, bur burdens on our shoulders and uh, lots of financial burdens. And especially when we live in West here, so we have to work hard to meet our means. So sometimes in a family, both husband and wife, they go for work and we have a very less time to give our family members, especially our parents. And uh, with the passage of time, our relation with the Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala and our parents is becoming weaker and weaker because we have not sufficient time to serve them, to address their issues, to address their needs. Sometimes because we are so much involved of work, so much tired, when they ask any need or ask any wish, we become annoyed and we give response in inappropriate manners. Sometimes we go for disrespectful, we address the issues in a disrespectful ways. So today I'll talk about the teachings of Islam and the teachings of Prophet how Allah wa ta describes in certain conditions how we deal with our parents and what are the commandments of Allah wa ta and Rasulullah uh, Respective viewers, actually it's a long subject and uh, it will take about two or three episodes. Inshallah we'll go for that. Uh, today I'll share with you one of the ayah in Quran. In this ayah, in this verse, Allah wa ta very beautifully describes a relation of parents, how we deal our parents. And Allah Tabarak Ta'ala says, وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهُ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا إِمَّا يَبْلُغَنَّ عِنْدَكَ الْكِبَرَ أَحَدُهُمَا أَوْ كِلَاهُمَا فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفٍ وَلَا تَنْهَرْهُمَا وَقُلْ لَهُمَا قَوْلًا كَرِيمًا Allah says that Allah has decreed that you worship none but Allah. After that, so we worship none but Allah and then you be dutiful with your parents. Here Allah wa Ta'ala use word Ihsan. There is a, uh, Ihsan carries a huge meaning and we cannot uh, uh, translate Ihsan as a dutiful or respectful. Ihsan is such so sort of kindness you do with the other person without having any sort of interest of getting back any sort of thanks or response. Uh, in other words, you do kindness to those people who are not worthy for the kindness. For example, a person is making anything for, is cruel to you, a person is not happy, is, is not uh, doing good to you and you are doing good things to that person, it is called Ahsan. Adal is a parallel relation. If a person is good to you, is a person is kind to you, and you are also kind that person. But in Ahsan, you show your kindness to that person. A person is responding to you in a good ways or a bad ways. But your duty, you be a kind to that person. So look at that here, Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala describes a word of Ahsan, when you are dealing with your parents, after, after shirk, after you admit that Allah is alone, the second duty a person, a put Allah Tabarakutala on a person's shoulder, to, to deal with your parents with Ahsan, not with Adal. And after that, Allah Tabarakutala says that, if one of them or both of them attain old age and then you will not use any word of disrespect or you cannot say oof. Oof is a gesture. 
here Alata Bhargatala also deals with a gesture. For example, I am dealing with my parents, I am providing food, I am taking care of them, but uh, my body language shows the disrespect, my face appearance shows that I am not happy with, uh, by doing the service of my parents or I am shrugging my shoulder. So Allah wa ta'ala also dislikes this sort of a movement and Allah wa ta'ala uh, says it is a disrespectful you to your parents not to do that and after Allah says that do not shout and do not shout and always use kind words to your parents. So here in this ayah if we look at in this ayah Allah wa ta'ala describes all our relation how we can deal with our parents. First of all we should have to take care of all their needs like they had in our childhood. They had in our childhood and now we also take care of all their needs, all their financial needs, all their physical needs, all their spiritual needs. We have to do that. For example, you know that when we are in, we are in childhood, our parents can take care, our parents could take care of all our needs. They take us our madrissa for education. In the night time, they told us stories to make a character building. They recited the ayah verses of Quran by laying down a bed. They are reciting the ayah, they, they used to recite the ayah. Why? The spiritual needs. They fulfill all our needs. So, it also have a same responsibility we have on our shoulder. Actually, parents are those Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala's great blessing after Iman. Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala has given us a very, very great blessing in the shape of parents. In all their age, always they do dua, they do support their children. But in a certain time, this relation becomes a reverse. When they become old, they need our. Because in that certain old age, you know that. They, they suffer in different diseases, they forget the things, they act li like child, children. So at that time, we need to take care of all their needs. Sometimes they, they uh, ask for the, uh, the things, not a sensible thing. We should not be show our anger on those demands. Like when we were doing our demands in a childhood, they didn't say anything to us. So why, when they ask us anything? And you know, once uh, I was uh, in a college and one of my uh, friends, he told me that yesterday, we spent about five hours with our grandpa uh, roaming around the city. I said, what happened? He said that my father, my grandfather asked my father to would like to have a ride or car. So when we took our uh, grandpa, grandfather, and he insisted, he said that you only uh, turn the right side of your car. So he said that we all the way, we all the night we were turning our car right, right, right. Eventually, when he calmed down and then we uh, came house. Many, many things we feel that it is a silly. But you think about it, when we were child, how many silly things we asked for our parents. Did they show their anger? always they, they take care of in the kindness. So one thing is to take care of all their needs. Sometimes we if people uh, think that look at that my father has in his room he has a medicine, he has a other, he has a TV, he, he can see the, he can watch the movies and he can entertain himself, he has a medicine, he has a food in his, so I take care of all his needs. No. What about the social needs? Oh, he feels loneliness in his room. So, how many hours do you give a company? Maybe you are so much involved in your job, but you can give a five minutes, ten minutes, or you can say hello, hi. You go to a room of your father and have a nice hug and a kiss to your parents, my father and mother, to sit along with them for a while, to talk about your activities. You, today I did this, 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 this. And in this way, we give us we give a social, you know, fulfill their social needs. It's a very sad thing nowadays, you know, mostly our old 
people, they are in the old houses and they are, they are looking for people to talk, to talk, they, they feel so much loneliness. So needs is not like we are providing any physical thing, yes, this also absolutely is a part of a need to provide them food on a time, to provide them medicine if they have a doctor's appointment. So to take them to the doctor's appointment, to, to, to cater all their needs. While catering all their needs, it's not sufficient here, Allah says. It's not sufficient here. After taking care of all the needs of the parents, now you show your gesture, good gesture to your parents all the time. Whether they are in angry mood, whether they are in a good mood, whether they are annoying you, whether they are in a, in a very you know, cheerful mood, but always you be a dutiful, always you be in a humble way, always you address them you know, with a smiling face. You do not give say even if, you don't shrug your shoulder and you do not use any bad words. So this, uh, in this ayah, if we go deep on this ayah, Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala teaches us not to provide all the physical needs of your parents. Also you fulfill their spiritual needs, also you fulfill their social needs, it is, uh, it is your duty. And apart from that, your behavior is, does matter, how you behave like that. In one of the hadiths, Prophet said that if a person cast a affectionate look at parents, if a person look at the faces of his parents with love, what happened? Allah will grant him a reward of one hajj mabroor. Hajj mabroor is the hajj Allah wa ta'ala accepted. Look at that. Look at the amount of reward. Why? Your, your body gesture, your behavior, you're, you, you, you don't do anything. You do not provide anything. You do not, you do not give a glass of water. You do not cater any need. You just sit along with your parents and just look at them with a smiling face, with the core of your heart, with the, with the love. Love eye you put on the face of your parents and Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala will grant a reward of one hajj mabroor. Hazrat Abu Rahulullah Ta'ala Anhu asked Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if we look at 100 times in a, ta in a day, so then we will get the rewards of 100 hajjas in one day. Allah uh, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, yes, Allah's mercy is beyond our imagination. So what we get from this hadith, this hadith mentions that not only your your relation, you are providing support, but your gesture does matter. Your gesture does matter. And then keep going on this ayah, Allah Taala says, وَخْفِظْ لَهُمَا جُنَاحَ ذُلِّ مِنَ الرَّحْمَةِ وَقُرْ رَبِّ رَحَمْهُمَا كَمَا رَبَّ يَعْنِي صَغِيرًا Allah Taala says that your relation and duty is not finished here. If your parents are alive, you you had an opportunity, they attained the old age, now Allah Tabarakutala grants you an opportunity and now you fulfill this, your duties and you take care of them. But if they die, your duty is not finished. Your duty is still going on. Your relation, your contact, uh, contact with your parents will be going on. وَخْفِزْ لَهُمَا جُنَاحَ ذُلِّ مِنَ الرَّحْمَةِ وَقُرْ رَبِّ رَحَمْهُمَا so Allah says that, and lower to them wing of humility out of mercy and dua for them, supplicate for them. O oh Allah, O oh Allah have mercy upon them as they did, they did grant me all the, they did grow me in my childhood. So what does it mean? It means that you do dua your parents, dua in their life and after life as well. So what Allah Tabarakta describes, look at that, how beautifully Allah Tabarakta describes our relation with our parents. This relation is not only the relation 
for the few years for example my parents attain old age and i do serve for few few years then they pass away and i forget about them no you keep on doing dua for them you keep on doing dua for them they need your dua they need your supplication and here allah tbaraka wa taala describes you our duty our duty is not finished yet and think about it our response our parents are alive we even not having a chit chat we not having much time how many minutes requires how many you know long sittings requires if i cannot see a few you know uh, junk mails if i not go browse on the you know the google page or browse no browse no for the facebook instagram if i spare 10 minutes of my time from busy routine 15 minutes half an hour and just sit along with my parents and just have a look at a very uh, uh, with out of love look at them sit with them humiliation respect so how 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 much reward i will be getting on hazrat abu hurairah radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu once when he was walking and he saw two people they were walking along them and uh, he when they introduce themselves once uh, one person said that that the old old man is my father then as abu hurairah radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu said that you should not you should not call your father by his name you should not walk in front of your father you should not sit before he sits these are the etiquettes of manners in west you know there is a common fashion we are calling uh, we are calling people by their names where is the respect how beautiful name of how beautiful name of abbi or how beautiful name of baba how beautiful name of ummi ami mama how beautiful names are and instead of using these beautiful names i am calling by names instead of walking in front of that i am sometimes saying that you don't know i know everything sometimes i become so arrogant by showing my knowledge yes they are the people of the previous generation many scientific things many new you know knowledges they don't know that but it doesn't know that they are not wise it doesn't know that the, they have no wisdom and we have all wisdoms knowledge doesn't that does not mean that we have all wisdom we always seek we always seek their guidance for wisdom problem is that in the, our society now because in a modern age our parents can't use internet our parents can't use in the different gadgets can't use new technologies and we think that they are unwise people yes maybe few things they don't know that but we cannot question about their wisdom and you know that in their decisions allah tbaraka wa taala's blessings if we ask if we sit along with my parents and ask them what do you suggest for this and ask them take along them and ask them in respectful way so their decision and their advice i'm telling you a uh, very very high weightage of this advice but nowadays we are so much uh, busy in our routine we are so much busy we cut our relations here what about the hereafter it is a very sad thing i'm telling you my respected viewers sometimes when there is any janaza and i have to go to the graveyard and uh, i witness from from my own eyes even children they can't know namaz e janaza they can't know few words parents who did care all their lives they even not repay back this you know few words they cannot even do dua even parents even some children they don't know that while we putting the body of dead body in a grave how we put it in the graveyard in a grave after putting that how, what dua we do that even they don't know the dua so how painful the situation now we cut off our relation 
and Allah Tabarakta has granted us a mercy, has granted us a mercy, and we we don't we don't realize it. We don't realize it how important Allah Tabarak wa Taala has given us a, a blessing in our houses. These are the blessed people in our houses. We don't go anywhere. We just sit along with them, look at their faces, and we grant the uh, rewards of Hajj. Once a person came to Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he said that. He said that, oh, Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, I would like to go for jihad. And you know that importance of jihad, importance of jihad along with the blessed Prophet Imam Al Ambiya, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. How much is the weightage of that jihad? And then that that military expedition, Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked that, do you have your mother? He said yes. Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that you stay back with your mother. Because paradise lies under the feet of your mother. Allahu Akbar. Where we go, all you know. I'm telling you, peace, all tranquility, heaven, everything is in your house, my dear brother and sisters. We just, we just take our hearts open. We just follow the commandments of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We just follow that once, as Abdullah bin Umar, رضي الله تعالى عنه, he was doing tawaf Kaaba. He was taking a round of Kaaba, and he saw a person who carried his mother. Who carried his mother, and he was taking round of Kaaba. When he saw as Abdullah bin Umar, رضي الله تعالى عنه, and he then said that, oh Abdullah bin Umar. I did a lot of toil to bring my mother here to do this Hajj. So, did I repay pay back all the efforts my mother did it for me? Abdullah Muhammad said, "No, you even haven't repay pay back a single pain. She got it during the time of your birth. So, what about you are thinking about you carried your mother and?" Lastly, I am telling you, my dear respected viewers. Once Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that he was crying, and Sahaba asked that to Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, "Why are you crying?" He said that I am now. I am thinking about my mother. If my mother is alive, and I am standing in Aisha prayer and recite, start reciting Surah Fatiha. Look at that, Surah Fatiha. No, no surah like this in whole Quran. Surah Fatiha, and my mother called me. And I leave my prayer, and listen to my mother. Allah Tabarak wa Taala grant her wisdom and understanding. My respe respected viewers, it's a long subject. Insha Allah, I'll talk about the specifically mother's rights and the father's right, uh, and uh, how we can, uh, and also the responsibilities of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then I'll also tell you about the different stories of Sahaba Ikram. How they dealt with their parents. Wa ma'alayna illa al-balagh.